getting cold fast. Had to dig my car out of an ice block this morning. I've been working hard on coming up with ideas and I think I have the solution for a fundamental two-stroke problem. Last time we talked about running the cylinder 90 degrees twisted or rotated from what you normally do and by combining that with a closed end piston pin we could run a 100% exhaust port width, a twin or a triple port of course, without communication between the transfer ports and the exhaust port. Now Mark Atkinson, you might have heard of this guy, he's uh, extremely talented, he's made some pretty awesome stuff. One of the things he's come up with is a piston with a fully closed outer fully closed outer and uh, internal piston pin. So the whole piston pin assembly is screwed into the piston shell and thereby the whole thing is closed. No communication between ports. What's funny is that Niels, the creator of Engmod, there's a link to the program below. Also there's a link to uh, Mark Atkinson's Instagram and YouTube channel. Check it out. But anyways, what's funny is that just Maybe an hour or two after um, after Mark Atkinson left a comment about being uh, willing to make me a piston after race season. Did I mention he was going to make me a piston? Yeah, whatever. <coughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but anyways, Niels sent me a mail uh, with a link to a video of Mark Atkinson showing off this piston. Kind of funny that he had already left a comment saying he could make me a piston as soon as he had time after race season. So his piston, without any holes on the outside, makes my 90 degree cylinder ID and a closed piston pin redundant. I replied to Niels, told him I was grateful uh, for the link and that this guy had already contacted me and said he was going to make me a piston. Then I told him about uh, other ideas I had, maybe making a twin or even a triple cylinder. Cause as you all know, a twin or a triple in theory should be more powerful than a single cylinder. Just because there's more port area compared to cylinder volume. Niels replied and yet again sent me a link to a Dutch, of course, thread of a guy making a twin cylinder 50cc engine. Extremely well made. Extremely modern uh, porting and, and stuff, but results were lacking. Why? There were some things discussed, disadvantages with the smaller bore engines that I haven't thought about. First up, crowded ports. Let's spread out a typical cylinder on the paper here. So this is the whole circumference of the cylinder. And you have the ports here. So that's half the C transfer. And the B transfer. And the A transfers. Not perfect. And the exhaust port. And some auxiliaries. So let's say this is a large cylinder and here comes the smaller one. Okay, that's a really bad drawing, but <laughs> okay. Sorry for that uh, extremely poor illustration. What I want to illustrate here, which I obviously can't, is that in a smaller bore, the ports are much closer together. It's might, it might be easier if uh, we show it in a round cylinder. So you have the exhaust port here, and some A here, and B here, and B here. So this is a small cylinder. In a large cylinder, exhaust, transfers, Okay, this 
So this is a port, this is a port, this is the exhaust port, port, ah, crack. Anyways, in a cylinder, the stuff coming out of this port is much closer to the stuff coming out of this port and this port. And this makes for poor control. This one is easier to illustrate. In anything with flow through it, be it linear or turbulent, in a two stroke, it's uh, a mix match of both. And uh, uh, actually, I'm not quite sure if uh, boundary layers apply to two strokes. It's uh, I have to do some research. I haven't um, I haven't looked much into boundary layers and turbulent and linear flow. But anyways. A boundary layer is a layer close to the wall of a duct where the mixture isn't moving much at all. In short. Now if you have a large duct, the boundary layer will be this size. If you have a smaller duct, the boundary layer will still be the same size. And you in uh, pr in practice you lose more volume from the boundary layer in a smaller duct versus a larger duct. Heat loss as the area is larger relative to the volume in a smaller bore engine than in a larger bore engine, there's more area exposed to the given volume in that engine. And thereby, there will be more heat loss into the surrounding walls of any, any cavity in the engine. This also works the other way around. So anywhere you don't want heat from surrounding metal parts to transfer into the, to the air fuel mix, there will be more transfer of heat into the mix in a small engine than in a large engine because of the larger area to volume ratio. Maybe 50cc is about the point of uh, diminishing returns. Any smaller than 50cc and the advantages from the larger area to volume ratio is eaten up by this heat loss and uh, the crowded ports and the boundary layer being larger relative to the actual cylinder ducts. Hmm, maybe. In my mail to Niels, I also mentioned an idea I have about uh, removing the C port and having the B ports extend all the way to the middle of the cylinder on the back wall with just a tiny divider in between and maybe angling these ports a little strange to make up for the loss of the upwards flow from the C port. The whole point here is to maximize blowdown and I was thinking if I could uh, gain some area by widening the B ports and getting rid of the C port I could lower the transfers and make more blowdown, have more blowdown above the transfers, more exhaust uh, area above the transfers. Then it dawned on me. In a two-stroke engine, when you're up at peak power in a modern proper racing two-stroke engine, there will be backflow in the port that opens first. You can easily see this in the simulations. There will always be a peak in transfer pressure just after they open, cause there's still higher pressure in the cylinder than in the transfer ducts. Now, having one port open before the other ports means that there's only backflow in this port. And as the other ports open, if you time this stuff correctly, they will start flowing immediately. And then soon after, this port that opens first will also start flowing. 
Now by having two larger B ports and no C port, either I would have to open the, all the ports at once and have some initial backflow into all the ports and then they would start flowing the right way or I would have to open either the A ports or the B ports first and have backflow into them before they started flowing the right way. Now this would mean a lot more area with backflow at transfer port open. Not a good ID, I think. I've scrapped the four port ID. My ID is a smaller C port, so still wider B ports, but a smaller C port that opens first. And then the B ports and then the A ports. The A ports last because then I can run uh, larger auxiliary exhaust ports. But do they have to be auxiliary exhaust ports? With a custom piston without these uh, pinholes like the one Mark Atkinson is making, you can run a 100% of bore exhaust port, but it has to be a twin or a triple port. You can't remove the bridges because the piston ring will snag and break. Here's a typical piston ring. Sits around the piston, seals the cylinder. Combustion gases are applying pressure on the overside and the inside of the pin and pushes it outwards into the cylinder wall. Now it can tolerate a pretty large hole in that said cylinder wall before it bulges too much out and snags and breaks. That's why if you want to run a really large port, you need a bridge or two bridges. If you were to run a 100% of bore single port, it would snag instantly and break. How can we keep the ring from snagging when running with basically half the cylinder wall missing? How about making small tabs here with corresponding holes or pins in the cylinder so either a hole or a groove for it to sit in or two pins keeping it from moving like this keeping it from springing out too much If possible, I think this could retain the ring from springing too much out. It has to be carefully designed so that it can apply enough pressure on the wall, but still not so much that it can push out into a port and break. Option number two is kind of similar and maybe simpler. You could make the ring with two tabs and holes and have pins in those holes, corresponding pins in the piston. That will do the same thing as the last uh, drawing. So retain the ring from springing out too much. So this is my idea. This is what I think could revolutionize two strokes. <laughs> like that's needed. <laughs> okay, so that's the idea. A piston ring that can't spring out and uh, snag in a port. If possible, it will lead to unrivaled blowdown area and unheard of power, maybe. I think maybe a custom cylinder and piston is, um, is going to be the plan here. A fully custom engine, actually. I have a couple of more ideas too. I, I want to incorporate into a custom cylinder if I'm able to get one made. I will have to try to team up with some uh, metal um, 3D printing companies or something. It's possible. I'll see what I can um, make happen. Yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this made sense. I have a bad feeling about, uh, <laughs> about it, but I've had that bad feeling many times before while I was filming in the garage and uh, Mostly it has turned out okay And you have watched it now, so it probably did See you later